Hey guys, Chili here. I'll be doing a tutorial on After Effects. I'll be trying to recreate the scene I did in the very last Cop San Andreas episode. Uh, the very intro where the blood vessels are moving through um, and they're slowly, slowly tilting with some depth of field in there as well. You can see all the um, all the different cells moving in uh, in different directions all at the same time. So we'll try to recreate that today. Uh, it's going to look a little bit different because I'm doing it from scratch again, but as as long as you get it close enough, and um, hopefully you'll learn a few things on the way. So all my settings are, uh, you know, 1080p. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll leave everything as is for for today anyway. All right, now the first thing we'll need to do, we'll just get a background all set up. A little bit nicer to work with. We'll get a, a darkish red and we'll get a dark, so black, almost full black color. Then we'll go up into the ellipse tool, double click it. It's gonna do a circle like so. And we'll feather that out. At least it's something to work with for now. I'll probably redo the background later, but yeah, something to start with. All right, we're gonna go new, solid, doesn't matter what color, effect, video copilot element. We'll open that up. Go to scene setup. And we just need to find where the blood vessel is kept. Here we go. Uh, and I used the dead one. Now, the reason I did use that is just because it's got a lot of um, nice uh, sort of bumps and things like that in there. Um, and we went into materials. I think I used a material from Pro Shaders 1, um, one of the organic ones. I think I used Wet Lizard. Looks, uh, looks good. All right, and then we'll go into diffuse color. We want to change that to a red. We'll, uh, we'll fit around with all the colors and everything like that later. We're just going to get everything set up now. Going to get our camera. We'll do a 35. It's just, you know, preference. So you can get a good look at this. So particle replicator. How many are we going to get? We'll get, we'll start with 28. See how that looks. All right, then we go into particle rotation, rotation random. We should have probably spread it out a bit, but that's all right. Just move these up a few. We're getting a sort of organic ball at the moment. So, I mean, that's something cool as it is, but we don't want that. Now we go down into multi-object, enable multi-object. And this is gonna give us settings so we can basically just scatter them everywhere, which is what we wanna do. Just gonna bump this one up a bit. They're all sort of flying out from inward, which we don't want, but that's all right, we'll fix that. Scatter on X axis, Y, only slightly, I don't want too much on that. And the Z axis. I, I need to definitely do is we want them to move um, you saw that they were moving in slow motion in the clip. Uh, so we'll go down to multi-objects. We'll do a couple of keyframes, move forward substantially. Uh, we're not going to do it that long. And just have them move a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. Oh, we got to do keyframes for that one. There you go, you can see them moving. And there you have it. So that was, I, I didn't have much movement at all. So that was basically all, all, we, all we really had. Then you got to go into camera, camera options, depth of field on, 
And then we've just got to play around with the focus distance. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. It's going to be, be pretty taxing on the computer, so it, it'll be quite slow. But you can see that where it's getting quite visible. And we want to turn the aperture up a bit more, so you're getting even more blur. Sorry, it's loading. It's going to be quite temperamental now. And that looks all right. So over time, if we turn this down to a third, hopefully it'll load a bit quicker. Over time, you're going to see it moves like that. It's still keeping a bit of it in focus up to the 22nd mark that we were setting everything to. If you weren't happy with that, you can move the camera around to keep another section of that in focus. But for this demonstration, I think it's going to be fine. Now, let's go and do a new adjustment layer, effect, color correction, curves. Here we can play around with it a little bit. So got it a bit darker, but this red is still a bit too light. So I'm going to go color correction. So I'm going to tint it. Go color corrections, tint the other one because I should have done that. It was lighter in the middle, darker on the outside. So we'll do that right now. Right, so that's looking a lot closer to what I had in the video. And from there, you can just do a few small things. We want to brighten it up a little bit. Then another thing you can do is you can go back into the scene setup. We can go to the diffuse of color and things like that in the specular and we can either turn that up, turn that down. So if we turn that right up, you can see the effect it's gonna have. A lot more shiny. Up to you if you want that. I don't think it's sort of going to suit it though, so I turned it all the way down. And we'll turn that right down as well. I put a bright tint on it and then turned it substantially down as well. Probably not going to notice it too much, but you know, whatever. Uh, we left that. And basically from here, you can just go through and you can play around and just see what, what looks, what looks decent, what, um, what gives you a, uh, an organic sort of look to it. And that was to turn in the specular off. Still got a bit of light here, which I'm not overly happy with, but again, we can easily change that. So that's not a problem. Um, and that's that's basically it. So you just play this back, you render it out. It's going to be 20 seconds of this motion. And other than that, it was just a substantial amount of sound effects, um, a lot of organic sound effects. And um, yeah, it's great program element 3D. If you don't have it, definitely worth the investment because you can um, you're moving everything at real time. I've got this on full, so it's loading quite slow but if we turn this down a quarter you're going to be able to um, move shit around a lot easier so we could always change which one we're zooming in on if you're finding that everything's loading unbearably slow just go back into the camera turn um, depth of field off and you're going to be moving around quite quickly now and we can set up where we wanted go oh, I want a few more in the background so we'll turn it around we'll zoom in on this one and all the depth of field settings are gonna save so we turn them back on and we just need to 
change the focal distance a bit, which is not a problem. And uh, maybe we've got a little bit too close. That's all right. It's a bit of a uh, trial and error anyway. And you'll see if, if it's looking like this, where you've got just a line on there that's visible, but everything else is still blurry, it just means your aperture is far too high. So turn the aperture down. And see, so you got more visible now. Turn it down even more. And now you've got the whole piece clearly visible. And um, that's it. I'll be uploading a few tutorials here and there as I go through doing uh, videos on the other channel. If there's anything in the uh, videos that I upload that you want to see how I did that, just put it in the comments and I'll easily be able to upload a quick tutorial for you. Um, so thanks for watching. If you've got any other questions about um, anything further with, with this particular tutorial, just put it in the comments and let me know. Thanks.